Hello everyone, thanks again for joining us on this eighth installment of Hudson County Live and Uncut. I'm Mark Businich, filling in for my esteemed colleague, John Hines, who will return next week on the airwaves. We have a lot to talk about uh, today, so let's get started. Um, the just, just when you thought all the election news in Hudson County was uh, over, as, they, as, it, as it has been in West New York and North Bergen, there was an election on Tuesday night in the small town of East Newark, New Jersey, where for the very first time in over 30 years, former East Newark Mayor Joe Smith was bested by female challenger Dina Grillo. She will become, expecting that there'll be no Republican challenger, uh, she will become East Newark's first female uh, mayor uh, soon. Uh, so, uh, she, um, so this, uh, it was a, other than that uh, defeat by the longtime incumbent, uh, Mr. Joe Smith, the rest of the Hudson County Democratic Organization's candidates had a clean sweep, uh, including Hudson County Executive Tom DeGeese, uh, Hudson County Sheriff Frank Shalari, County Surrogate Till Ravas, as well as all the six assembly representatives including their four members on the Harrison Council and two members of the East Newark Council. Assembly members Angelica Jimenez and Pedro Mejia of the 32nd Legislative District were the only two electeds who faced challenges in a Democratic primary, uh, and they also came out victorious. Uh, we will then be going onwards to, uh, we had the pleasure of joining a boat tour yesterday in Bayonne, we will then discuss uh, the coverage that we, <clears throat> coverage of the Hoboken Pride Month that launched in on Monday with the flag raising ceremony. And finally, we will uh, top off all our coverage from this week with the ongoing saga and drama surrounding Board of Education funding in Jersey City where the City Council convened a special meeting to try to resolve the BOE's funding woes, but nobody from the BOE showed up. And uh, so uh, that saga continues, and we will get to that right after this commercial break. Thanks again for joining us. It takes more than a state-of-the-art medical facility to make a great hospital. It takes a team of dedicated medical professionals. That's the Jersey City Medical Center, Hudson County's number one hospital. Medical teams consisting of New Jersey's top doctors, magnet award-winning nurses, and accomplished hospital associates, all committed to your good health. That's what you have at the Jersey City Medical Center. Make Hudson County's number one hospital your first choice. Visit us on the web at BarnabasHealth.org. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Oh, got, got it. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us again. What a week it was on Hudson County News. Uh, we just touched upon some of the election coverage that went on in uh, East Newark, where, again, the first female, uh, expected to be first female uh, mayor of East Newark, Dina Grillo, uh, because there will probably be no Republican challenger. Uh, so it's safe to say that she will be the first female leader. But we had, um, <clears throat> of, of all the coverage, uh, that, of all the news that we reported on this week, yesterday, let's start off with yesterday, where we were invited to a boat tour in Bayonne. Now, many of you resident, many of you viewers who have been following us online probably saw the video footage that we had back in November when there was an implosion at the Military Ocean Terminal, uh, which was an event organized by the real estate company that will be developing a new logistics center in Bayonne. The real estate group is Lincoln Equities Group, and yesterday they invited media, Bayonne elected officials, including the city council and Bayonne Mayor Jimmy Davis, 
<clears throat> and in Hudson County View uh, as well, we had the great opportunity of joining that boat tour to be able to see from the water the kind of progress that is being made on that site. Now, since that demolition back in November, a lot has been happening. Big, giant excavators and cranes and mining trucks have had to remove all the debris that was once existed there. Uh, and now <clears throat> they are in the process of filling up the uh, property with clean fill, which will take about another year uh, before that is completed and before actual construction on the center begins. So we have some video from that boat tour, so let's check it out uh, before we go to the next commercial break. Lincoln Equities Group chartered a boat at the Military Ocean Terminal so that its employees, the Bayonne City Council and Mayor, could survey the progress thus far on the property that the real estate company plans to develop into a 1.6 million square foot logistics center. Yeah, right now what we're doing is Lincoln Equities, which is the company that bought the Ports of America property here on the Military Ocean Terminal. They're here with some of their investors and other people to show exactly what's going on at the base, with, mostly with their property, with you know building the um, the warehouses that are going to you know to provide close to 2,700 jobs for our community. So right now, what they're doing is they've, they've invited everybody. They rented this boat. We're going to go out. We're going to go around, look at the property, see what's going on, so that they can. And then they'll explain how each process will go as we as as it goes through. And, and just to follow up, you said those jobs that could be available for Bayonne residents. Can you just name a couple of what those well, jobs are? Well, there there's you know in in warehousing today, there the the spectrum of jobs run from a, a forklift operator all all the way up to IT people. You know, there's a lot of very technical jobs the way warehouses uh, are today. They're not warehouses of old. Um, you know, there's staff, uh, there's internal staff, and then of course there's a trucking staff that's going to go back and forth as well. Are you looking forward to that completion? Very much so. It's a great project for the region, a great project for business. The Lincoln project being built directly across the channel from our terminal will allow containers to come off of our ships, go right to the warehouse, where they can then be broken down and distributed out to the retail stores. So it limits the amount of truck miles, the traffic and congestion on the road. It's faster with cargo getting to market because it's going right, can go right from the marine terminal to the warehouse and the availability of cargo is quicker and it provides a lot of good paying jobs both at the Lincoln site and also will help in our site. And what exactly is in those containers? Generally, we don't know what's in each specific container, but just coming out of the region, out of South America, you a lot of a lot of fruits and vegetables, a lot of wine, a lot of tile and granite. Out of uh, Europe, you get a lot of liquor, um, a lot of beer, foodstuffs. You get machinery manufactured overseas that's shipped to us, and of course, coming out of Asia, a lot of apparel and clothing. Furniture, which is the single largest import commodity into the Port of New York, by container volume is furniture. Um, you know everything: toys, electronics. If they can fit it inside a container, they'll put it on a ship. Mark Busnich reporting from the water in Bayonne, for Hudson County View. The eye of Newport, the, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers the quality of life you deserve in ten high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path Subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or a quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details.
Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport, live like you want. Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for joining us again, the eighth installment of Hudson County Live and Uncut. Now, Monday we are in Hoboken uh, for a big event. It was the second time, second time in Mayor Ravi Bala's administration where he took part in Hoboken's Pride Month by raising, by uh, participating in a flag raising ceremony of the rainbow flag. Um, <clears throat> just like uh, he talked about all the initiatives that his administration has been taking so far during his tenure, policies that are friendly and welcoming to the LGBTQ community. We had a chance to interview uh, Hoboken Mayor Ravi Bala to ask him about some of those initiatives, but we also had to follow up with him because noticeably absent from the press conference, just the same thing as last year, was Hoboken's first openly gay elected official, Michael DeFusco, first ward councilman that is. He, wasn't, he was invited last year, but because he wasn't allowed to speak during the program last year, he declined the invitation. So we followed up with the mayor to find out if he was invited again this year. He said that indeed he was, and that Hoboken takes great pride in uh, Hoboken's first, in Mike DeFusco being the, first, the city's first openly gay elected official. Um, but we, fought, we asked the mayor if he was disappointed that uh, Councilman Michael DeFusco couldn't attend, and the mayor then responded that it's possible because DeFusco wasn't there because he had a scheduling conflict. Other speakers that we spoke to included Laura Niddle, who is the mayor's liaison to the LGBTQ community, and she had a, a lot to say to us in an interview, particularly about even though Hoboken has made a lot of progress and a lot of strides in welcoming and trying to um, resolve some of the issues that still surround the LGBTQ community, problems that they encounter on a daily basis. Um, she said they've done a lot so far, but that there are many of the members of the community who come to her office tell her some of the problems that they uh, have been facing, maybe such as loss of health care and facing depression because of uh, the possible discrimination that they face because of their sexual orientation. Um, so we filmed that, some of that, those events on Monday, and we want to show uh, the interview with Mayor Ravi Bala right now. You know, Mayor, and you mentioned a couple of things that your administration has taken that's welcoming towards the, the gay community. Can you just mention one or two of those uh, uh, initiatives again? Sure. We are very proud to have last year, uh, for the first time, received a 100% score from the National Human Rights Campaign. Uh, we are one of only two municipalities in the, in the state of New Jersey that have received that score. Uh, that's a, a great source of pride for Hoboken. In addition, we are the first municipality in the state of New Jersey to introduce gender-neutral restrooms uh, for single occupancy bathrooms. So that is um, a citywide initiative. All places of public accommodation that have single occupancy restrooms are gender-neutral here in the city of Hoboken. That was necessary to make sure we elevate the rights of the transgender community so that everyone feels comfortable in the city of Hoboken using a public restroom. You know, this year, obviously, Mayor is significant. Probably it's given the milestone, historic milestone. It is 50th year uh, since uh, Stonewall. And also, the eight, uh, just two weeks ago, was the 89th birthday of a former supervisor of San Francisco, Harvey Milk. Uh, does this Pride Month have more important than, say, any other year? It does. I'm sure it does to a lot of the members of, of the community. Um, you know, uh, Stonewall is, was, the, was the trigger, really, of the, the, the gay rights movement. So um, this year is, in that way, particularly special. And um, through the summer, we'll be having events um, to, to commemorate uh, and elevate the, um, the uh, commemorate events uh, like Stonewall, but also to um, elevate the gay community here in Hoboken. Mayor, my last question I had to ask, you know, last year you said Councilman Michael DeFusco was invited. Was he invited again this year because he was noticeably absent? And he is Hoboken's first gay elected official. Yes, uh, yes, all council members were invited. Um, it's, um, so uh, we are very proud here in Hoboken to have a gay councilman in uh, Michael DeFusco. Uh, unfortunately, he cannot be here today, uh, but yes, he was invited. Are you disappointed that he couldn't participate today? I mean, you know, he, he might have had a, a schedule conflict, um, but I'm sure, you know, he's here with us in spirit. 
Thank you for your time, Mayor. Okay, thank you. The Jersey City Medical Center, you know it for its award-winning, life-saving ambulance service. It's also your health hub with health and wellness locations staffed with certified professionals all through Hudson County. The Jersey City Medical Center, here to help you with your healthy, here when you need us the most. The Jersey City Medical Center, visit us on the net to learn more. Jersey City Medical Center, Robert Wood Johnson Barnabas Health Facility. Let's be healthy together. Good Friend Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201 867 2444 or visit us on the web today. Good Friend Self Storage, let us be your good friend. Hello everyone, thanks again. I hope, hopefully you enjoyed that video, the coverage that we uh, had in Hoboken on Monday. Um, the next segment that we're going to discuss right now is still the ongoing saga, the drama with the funding regarding the Jersey City Board of Education. Um, on Friday night of all, of all days, it was Friday night that the Board of Education convened their board meeting and the meeting went from 5 o'clock to midnight, almost seven hours. And we live face, uh, Hudson County View live streamed most of that hearing. Um, <clears throat> but the one big takeaway uh, from that meeting was that the Board of Education trustees had an opportunity to respond to some of the criticism that they received from the City Council because just four days prior to Friday night's uh, Board of Education meeting, the City Council convened a special meeting at 5 o'clock an hour before their own City Council meeting is supposed to start to uh, willing to meet with Board of Education trustees to talk about how the city could help out Jersey City B BOE with funding, especially since BOE has been funding that the city, now that it has, lo has local control of the public schools, needs to be kicking in some money. Now, uh, all, the, all the Board of Education, some of them explain why they didn't go to the meeting because they were informed by their council, BOE council, that it wouldn't make for good optics because the BOE is an autonomous, independent organization separate from the city council. But trustee Matt Shapiro was adamantly argued in favor that Board of Education trustees should have attended that meeting and should have sat down with the City Council because especially since if the BOE is requesting money, asking the city for money, well, they, sh they should have been at that meeting to, uh, to make that request in front of the City Council. Let's go to that videotape to see some of the uh, footage that we captured from the trustees. So this idea that, that we want money from them, but we're not going to talk to them about it, even tell them how much we want, is ridiculous. And the legal opinion was ridiculous. I'm not going to say what it was, I'm going to say I think it was ridiculous. And um, the, the members of this board attend meetings all the time without board approval, and the idea that there is something wrong with, with our uh, chief school administrator and our board president and our business administrator speaking to the city council about how mo the money that we want when we're asking them for money uh, I, I think that it's it, frankly it's a discussion that this board should have um, but if we're paying all this money to these attorneys to tell us not to go to something then I'm not going to go to it I'm not going to risk um, ethics charges because I was not listening to what our attorneys that we pay for lots of money because they bill I know I'm married to an attorney I know <laughs> you bill a lot and, and I telling you, I'm not going to show up to something that I don't understand what it was or what it was for, um, and that I'm not going to make any apologies for it. I didn't go for several reasons. One of those reasons was that I didn't quite understand why they wanted to put one of their board, one of their council people on our board. And one of the reasons why I didn't want to be involved in that is that I was here 31 years ago. I was a teacher in this district, and I saw what the influence of the city had to do on this district and why we were taken over, which was a very, very big reason why that happened. 
So we cannot go around inviting people to come on our board when I don't think it's, if it isn't illegal, it's certainly unethical to do that. In terms of the meetings with City Hall, some people mentioned this. I saw there was a news article about this as well. People were upset that we didn't show up at the meeting at City Hall. Um, and I think the board president mentioned this is, you know, we got a, a legal opinion um, that it was not recommended for us to go to this meeting. I mean, the city does not, is not supposed to have oversight on our finances. We're a separate independent body. And from the historical perspective, right, I mean, before I was even born, 31 years ago, this district was taken under state control because the city and the Board of Education were way too close. There was a patronage mill at the Board of Education run by City Hall, right? And this is 31 years ago. The mayor who was there at the time would say to people, listen, you want a job, go to the Board of Education, and they would get hired. And that's why the state came in and took over our district. And so for us to say 31 years later, right after we get back to local control, to say, listen, we want to go right back in that situation, we want to be right next to one another, I think it's not learning Consumer from history. Coffee, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer carpets, it's saving, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. Panapinto Properties, Jersey City. Shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office space and an address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment. Adjacent to all modes of transportation. On-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. 201-521-9000 or visit on the web at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Welcome back, everyone. <clears throat> you know, I was at that city council meeting, as we were just saying prior to commercial break, where council members uh, were kind of astounded that nobody from the BOE showed up at the special budget hearing that the council held. Um, Councilman Boggiano, Councilman Solomon, and Councilwoman uh, Denise Ridley uh, all expressed uh, astonishment that nobody from the BOE had attended the uh, special budget council hearing. Um, and, and, and as I said, James Solomon was chided the BOE for not attending. But on Friday night, he was the lone councilman that attended the board meeting. And he had an opportunity to speak during the public portion of the meeting to say to the council, um, to, give the, to explain to the council how there may be another legal path for the BOE to pursue funding from the city. Now, on, uh, count, uh, Board of Education President Sidon Thomas is on record as saying that the city and the BOE should enter into a shared services agreement as one way to fund the, uh, to fund the BOE budget. But Councilman Solomon spoke before the board on Friday to say that there's this other legal path, legislation that already exists in New Jersey that the, that the board might be able to pursue. Um, in essence, it would, allow the, uh, it would allow the city to use uh, uh, surplus funds and, un and unappropriated revenues from the city budget to allocate towards the uh, towards the BOE budget. And now we have some footage of uh, Councilman Woody, Councilman James Solomon explaining that exact legislation. He cited the legal opinion and he explained it to the board. Here's that video. Board President, you had said publicly that you believe the only way the city council could contribute funds to the school board was through a shared services agreement. And while we can do a shared services agreement, we're doing them currently on trash and, and I believe on uh, uh, security officers in the schools, there, are, there is an additional way. And I wanted to make sure that was on the public record, uh, then offer maybe a suggestion to you as a board tonight, uh, and then some, some potential next steps. So last year, in part because of the importance of school funding, a number of council members requested a legal opinion on how we could work with you. And I want to read from a portion of that opinion. So it says, here are the different ways the council can share funding with the school board. At first it lists shared services, which we discussed. The second is redevelopment, so the potential of 
using our real estate to provide a school, and that has been done in the past. But then here's the third one that I, that I want to read directly from the memo, and it says surplus funds. And it says a municipality may also transfer surplus revenues to its board of education through annual appropriation as set forth specifically in NJSA 4048.17.1, which states, and I'm going to read the full statute. When any municipality, the boundaries of which are identical with the boundaries of the local school district, shall have on hand surplus revenue unappropriated or anticipated receipts unappropriated for municipal purposes, the governing body may, in its discretion, by resolution adopted at a regular or special meeting thereof, authorize the transfer of and cause to be transferred all or any such part of unappropriated surplus revenue or unappropriated anticipated receipts as the governing body, in this case the council, shall deem advisable to the Board of Education of the school district of the municipality, provided, however, no transfer of surplus revenue or anticipated receipts by a governing body to the Board of Education of the local school district under the authority conferred by this section shall be made unless and until such proposed transfer or appropriation shall have been included in the local municipal budget for the year in which it is intended to make such a transfer available from a prior year's appropriation reserve and shall have been regularly approved, advertised, and adopted as a part of such local municipal budget. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but this legal memo explicitly says that we have the ability to use those surplus funds and it's basically in our budget, send them to you. Now, okay, you can applaud. Thank you. So, I, I would like to just say, like, help us help you. JCMC app, powered by Practice Unite. The free My JCMC app puts the power of healthcare at your fingertips. Go to the concierge for access to referrals, scheduling, and appointments. See emergency room wait times and get directions to Jersey City Medical Center health locations. Read the latest JCMC news through their social media feed. Find a doctor and more. The My JCMC app. We belong to you. Rama Jewelers, located in the Lyndhurst Shopping Center at 413 Valley Brook Avenue, Lyndhurst. Come for all your jeweler needs at Rama Jewelers, where you will find a fine selection of necklaces, earrings, rings, and bracelets. Choose from one of our complete sets, our many signature items, or find the perfect engagement ring. Come on down, that's Rama Jewelers at 413 Valley Brook Ave, Lyndhurst. Call 201-939-5784 or visit us online today. Hello everyone again, thanks for joining us for this last segment of the eighth installment of Hudson County View live and uncut um, here at the studios of the Hudson Media Group. You know, we just want to go back, we hope you enjoyed all the footage and all the segments that we uh, presented to you today. We just wanted to go back to the reporting that we did on Monday. Uh, we feel that it's important to announce that just as we were going live, during the commercial break that is, it just came over the wires uh, that the, and this is related to the Hoboken uh, Pride Month celebration on Monday where the rainbow flag was raised. Now, uh, it is this year, in fact, June 28th will mark the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Inn riots, or rebellion, some people say, when on June 28th, the early morning hours of June 28th, New York Police Department raided the Stonewall Inn Tavern and arrested all the gay patrons before they started fighting back. And as we were, as uh, there was a commercial break, NYPD Commissioner James O'Neill just apologized to the LGBTQ community saying, and these are his exact quotes, and we'll just read them real quickly to you, I am certainly not going to stand up here and pretend to be an expert at what happened at Stonewall. I do know what happened should not have happened in reference to the June 28th raid. We want to thank everyone who joined us for this uh, live show today. We hope to see you soon. And again, John Highness will be back next week.